Okay, so we're going to start off with the basics here, and this lecturette is going to correspond with the readings from Chapter 1, Section 1 of your textbook. Right. So what is an argument, officially? Well, generally speaking, it's a publicly expressed and hopefully logical tool of persuasion. Right. But more specifically, it's a group of propositions, which is, are also known as statements, like declarative statements. And we're going to use those two terms interchangeably. So um, keep that in mind. One or more of which, which are the premises, are claimed to provide support for or reasons to believe another proposition, which is the conclusion. So an argument is a system. Right? It's not one statement. You've got one statement you're trying to convince somebody else of, um, and you've got at least one other proposition or statement used as evidence for that one. Right. So before we continue, let's just look at a couple of examples of, of proper arguments on both sides of a particular issue. We'll look at two different issues here, right? So here's one that's pro-universal health care, for instance. The U.S. should institute a universal health care program. The founding documents of the United States provide support for a right to health care, and the right to health care is an internationally recognized human right. Also, instituting a right to health care could lower the cost of health care in the United States and could stop medical bankruptcies. Now, that's an argument in favor of universal health care. You can craft one against. You can have an anti-universal health care argument. The U.S. should not institute a universal health care program. The founding documents of the United States do not provide support for a right to health care. Furthermore, a right to health care could increase the U.S. debt and deficit. It could also lower the quality and availability of disease screening and treatment and increase the wait time for medical services. Right? Argument on both sides. Equally decent. Let's look at one about minimum wage. Here's pro-increased minimum wage. The U.S. should raise the federal minimum wage. Raising the federal minimum wage would increase economic activity and spur job growth. Increasing the minimum wage would also reduce poverty and reduce government welfare spending. Furthermore, the minimum wage has not kept up with inflation. And again, here's one against increased minimum wage. The U.S. should not raise the federal minimum wage. Increasing the minimum wage would force businesses to lay off employees and raise unemployment levels. A minimum wage increase would hurt businesses and force companies to close. Also, raising the minimum wage would increase the price of consumer goods, and it could be the case that teenagers and young adults are shut out of the workforce. So my point with these is that Basically, once you we have mastered the skill of argumentation, you can argue for or against anything as long as you're following the rules of good argument construction, which we're going to learn down the line. Now, we mentioned that word proposition. What is a proposition? So a proposition is simply a statement with a truth value. Like, the grass is green, water is H2O, pudding is delicious, we ought to pass that law, murder is wrong, there is life on other planets. Now, mind you, you may be thinking, well, how do we know that some of those are true and aren't some of those just opinions? Like, who says pudding is delicious or that we ought to pass that law or that there is life on, the, on other planets? We don't know that. That's not what it means for a statement to have a truth value. For a statement to have a truth value, it just means simply that you it makes sense to say this is true or this is false. That's it. Right? For instance, there are other sorts of, of statements that aren't propositions. Oops, sorry. Like um, a question. Like, what color is that pudding? <laughs> That's not... A proposition. You can't say true to that. It would make no sense. Or, hey, hand me that pudding. 
you can't say false to that. That would make no sense. But as long as you, it makes sense to say, is it true that there's life on other planets or is it false that there's life on other planets? Then that statement has a truth value. Again, it doesn't simply mean that the statement is in fact true. That's not what a proposition is, right? It means that it makes sense to say it's true or false, whichever you choose or whichever you know, or whether or not you know the answer. Now, a premise. A premise is the proposition or propositions that provide evidence or reason to believe the conclusion. Right? In other words, a premise provides support for a conclusion. Now, what's a conclusion? Conclusion is the ultimate aim or goal of the argument which the premises are meant or intended to support. Right? In other words, the conclusion is the proposition that you're trying to convince people of or that people are trying to convince you of. Right now, this may seem out of place, but this is kind of the toolbox section of the course. We need to just gather up some tools before we get to work on um, a couple other concepts here. So within an argumentative passage like the ones we saw about minimum wage and universal health care, you can often find what are known as indicator words or phrases. Right. And those words or phrases serve as red flags, as indicators like, hey, I most likely am a premise here or, hey, I most likely the conclusion here. Now, these words aren't always present, but when they are, they can give you a hint about how to unpack the argument. And by unpack the argument, I mean find the conclusion and articulate the premises one by one, which is known as standardizing the argument, and we'll get to that in a moment. But here's your list of premise indicators, right? These are all in your book as well, since, because, given that, seeing that, for the reason that, etc. Um, conclusion indicators, therefore, hence, it follows that, so, in conclusion, etc. So you want to keep these in mind and think through these a bit because they can help you, like I said, unpack and then standardize the argument, which is the goal of this section, this lecturette. So here's an example of an argument with a conclusion indicator. Heavy alcohol consumption causes dehydration. Marathon runners need to keep very well hydrated. You're running a marathon tomorrow. Therefore, you should not go out binge drinking tonight. So here you've got therefore highlighted. It's a conclusion indicator. So it's kind of letting you know, hey, here's the conclusion. You should not go out binge drinking tonight. And the rest of the argument is meant to support that conclusion, give you reasons to believe it. Here's that same example, but with a premise indicator. Same exact example. Heavy alcohol consumption causes dehydration. I don't need to repeat this one, but now instead of having a conclusion indicator here, you've got a premise indicator. So, whoa, you see that given that, and that's going to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some premises in this area. Right. The conclusion is still the same. The conclusion here is still you should not go out binge drinking tonight. But just we have a premise indicator instead. Now, again, these indicator words and phrases are not always present, but when they are, they're very helpful in unpacking the argument. Now, that unpacking, let's talk about that for a moment. Unpacking the argument is what we call stand, putting it into standard form in logic, right? And it's a very helpful tool. It's setting it up so that it can be more easily evaluated. It's kind of taking it out of passage form and putting it into a list form. It's getting everything ready for evaluation. It's kind of like this. Um, if you're going to cook a complex dish, right, it's best to get all of your ingredients chopped and readied and plated up so that you can compose the dish and you're not having to chop in the middle and dice over here and mince over here while you're trying to cook, right? So think of it kind of that way. Here's how you put an argument into standard form. 
Step one, look for indicators if they exist, right? Be they premise or conclusion indicators. Step two, identify the conclusion and write it out in full sentence form at the bottom of the list. We'll demonstrate this in a moment. Step three, identify the premises and list them numerically above the conclusion, omitting any indicator words and always in complete sentences. Then step four, make sure that you have omitted any non-working propositions and or non-propositions from your reconstruction. What that means is that get rid of, you trim the fat, get rid of anything that isn't working in the argument, that isn't relevant to the conclusion. If you got a question in there, that's not a proposition, get rid of it. And people write arguments that way. Right? You write arguments with a lot of rhetoric, and sometimes you make an exclamation for, for some flavor, for some punctuation. Here, what we're doing in order to standardize an argument, you're trimming all of everything that's unnecessary and making it really clean. Okay? So, that same argument that we looked at about um, running a marathon, here's what it looks like in standardized form. You've got your conclusion at the bottom, right, with a C colon, you should not go out binge drinking tonight. Well, why? I really wanted to because one, two, three, therefore, bam. This is what a standardized argument looks like, and some are easier to standardize than others. We're going to start with some mundane examples. And they'll be pretty simple, but that's how you start. So here's an example. The two of you should not get a dog. First, you're rarely home. Second, one of you has severe pet allergies. And also, don't forget that you're not yet financially ready for the expense involved in properly caring for an animal. Wake up, you two. So here's the breakdown. You've got the original argument on the left side, and here's how it is standardized. Conclusion, the two of you should not get a dog. This is what this passage is trying to convince you of. Well, why? I really want that dog and it's so cute and everybody I know has dogs. Well, first, you're rarely home. Second, one of you has severe pet allergies. Third, you're not yet financially ready. For all these reasons, the two of you should not get a dog. Notice, First in language is out of there. Second's out of there. Just trimming it. Make the claims. Trim all the fat. Right? And also, this wake up, you two, that's a gone or two. It doesn't belong in the argument. It's not a proposition. Only a proposition makes the final cut, and even some of those don't. So I hope you're getting what I'm laying down here. Trim the fat. Next. Bob should not be trusted. He's a liar, a thief, a cheater, and he's been arrested three times for fraud of the elderly. There's our argument. Now we're going to break it down. Right? Here's its original form. Here's how it breaks down. Right? The conclusion is Bob should not be trusted. But notice, all of this is one sentence, but you're making four different claims and they all packed into the same sentence. Those need to be broken down. And these commas give you an indication that you need to break this sentence down into premises. All right, so it breaks down like this and complete sentences for each premise. A, Bob shouldn't be trusted. Well, why? He seems so cool. Because Bob's a liar. Two, he's a thief. Three, he's a cheater. Four, he's been arrested three times for fraud of the elderly. Four premises and a conclusion. That's how this is broken down. Okay. Another example. Ticks are pesky, dangerous, and ubiquitous. Therefore, they should be exterminated, seeing as how they carry Lyme disease. Well, this is a little funky, right? So we got to unpack it and unpack it carefully. And in this case, you're going to use indicator words to help, right? For some reason, the author of this argument has put the conclusion in the middle, which is unusual, but some people do things that way. 
So here we're using our indicator word, which, uh, which our conclusion indicator, which is therefore. They should be exterminated. Ticks should be exterminated. Boom, that's your conclusion. Well, why? They're pesky. They're dangerous. They are ubiquitous, which just means they're all over the place. And they carry Lyme disease. For these four reasons, you can conclude that ticks should be exterminated. Remember again, everybody, we're not evaluating these arguments yet. We're just setting them up, right? And again, complete sentences for every line of the argument, be it a premise or a conclusion. Another example. San Diego has an ideal climate. It also has richly diverse neighborhoods. It's the host city for Comic-Con and it's the craft beer capital of America. San Diego rocks. Therefore, San Diego truly is the nation's finest city. Here's how it breaks down. Your conclusion is, hey, San Diego is the nation's finest city. That's what I want to convince you of. Oh yeah, well, how come? Bam, bam, bam. Bam, that's what makes the cut, right? What have we trimmed out? San Diego rocks. Now, technically speaking, if you were to say San Diego rocks, you can consider that a proposition. Somebody, it makes sense to say that's not true or that's true, right? But it really, this is where you have to use your intuition a little bit. It, whoever wrote this argument did not intend this to support this conclusion. So trim it. That's an, an act of trimming the fat here. It's just put in there for color so it doesn't make the cut. Another. Marijuana is not physiologically addictive. It does not do a great deal of harm to the body's organs. Imagine what the livers look like in those alcoholic congressmen. Marijuana could provide a strong revenue source for the states, and heaven knows they could use it. The states could save a fortune in drug enforcement costs. I love marijuana. Hence, marijuana should be legalized. Then here's the breakdown. Conclusion, along with the conclusion indicators, hence... Marijuana should be legalized. Well, how come? Because of this reason, that reason, that reason, that reason, all of which were sifted out of this passage. Now, let's take a look quick at what we got rid of. What didn't make the cut? Well, this. Imagine what the livers look like in those alcoholic congressmen. This was not intended to support the conclusion, nor is it a proposition strictly speaking you can't say true or false to this so it doesn't make the cut we cut and heaven knows they could use it notice right it's just trimming the fat we don't need it you're making claims to support the conclusion we also cut i love marijuana which whoever speaking here could I mean, for them, that could be a proposition. That could be true or false. But again, it does not service the support of the conclusion. Doesn't make the cut. Okay. Either the concert will be rained out or it will go on as planned. It didn't get rained out, so it's a safe bet that it'll go on as planned. Here's the breakdown. You've got either this is going to happen or this is going to happen. Well, as it turns out, this didn't happen. Therefore, the concert will go on as planned. Again, we're trimming out what is unnecessary. You're just making, um, just making claims, right? Again, I'll repeat it ad nauseum. Trim the fat. Claim, claim, conclusion. If the mind were independent of the body, then the mind could exist without any physical support. But the mind is not independent of the body, so it cannot exist without any physical support. This is a much more um, philosophical example, but we're using all different kinds of examples here. Just like that last argument, or similar to it, here's the breakdown. You've got the if this is the case, then, this would be the case. Well, that's not the case, therefore neither is this, right? Trimming the fat. 
another example. Just a couple more here. The youth of Athens are just like horses. Only a few specialized people can be said to improve horses. Therefore, only a few specialized people can be said to improve the youth of Athens. This is an example from Plato's The Apology. Right? So the conclusion here, what they're trying to convince you of is only a few specialized people can be said to improve the youth of Athens. And you've got a conclusion indicator here to help you with that. And then the argument breaks down like this. Well, first, so how come? How come it's the case that only a few specialized people can be said to improve the youth of Athens? Why can't, why doesn't everybody improve the youth of Athens? Well, because of this. The youth of Athens are just like horses, and only a few specialized people can be said to improve horses. And since the youth of Athens have so much in common with horses, apparently, you can draw this conclusion. Everything in the observable world has a cause. Nothing can be the cause of itself, and an infinite regress of causes is not possible. Ergo, there must be a first cause which we call God. This is actually an argument from Aquinas's five ways, five arguments for the existence of God. Breaks down like this. Conclusion, there must be a first cause which we call God. How come? What is your reasoning? What's your evidence? One reason, two reasons, three reasons. And again, notice all of those were packed into one sentence and they need to be unpacked and articulated. One claim per line. Final example. Performance enhancing drugs should remain banned from sports. They destroy the spirit of sport, create an unfair advantage for those who use them, are terribly detrimental to one's health and send the wrong message to children. Lance Armstrong's a total snake. Breakdown. What's the conclusion here? That's always what you should look for first. Mm, don't see any conclusion indicators. That'll often tell you maybe the first proposition is the conclusion, which it indeed is. What's this trying to convince you of? Performance enhancing drugs should remain banned from sports. Well, how come? It's so much more fun to watch sports when they're all roided out. Well, for this reason, they destroy the spirit of sport. They create an unfair advantage. They're terribly detrimental to one's health. They send the wrong message to children. And what didn't make the cut? Lance Armstrong is a total snake. Although that is a proposition, it doesn't make the cut because it's irrelevant to the conclusion. And you got to look into the intention of the author. That was kind of added on as flavor, right? Does not make the cut. Topics covered. We got arguments, propositions, premises, conclusions, indicator words, non-working propositions, compound arrangements of propositions where you have to um, break a single sentence down into several premises and putting arguments into standard form.